right, Dre. The future is now, and it's time to talk about the UPSL Georgia Premier Division fall season. It's kicking off this weekend. We got some big changes this season. Uh, first off, before we get too far for the spring season, we're still in the process of doing the 2024 fans' favorite goal contest. That ends on Friday. Uh, just want to give you a chance to let everybody know about the contest. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's something that we started last season. It's a, it's a way to really uh, have a little bit of a competition, a little friendly competition to see from the fans to see who is the best as far as the the, the top goal, whether it's just your favorite goal or, or you think it's the the best goal of the season. We went through you know well over a hundred goals to pick out twenty candidates, and if you go to upsl georgiacom uh, in, and look for the, the article on the front page there. Uh, you can uh, actually see the video that shows all the goals, and you also have an opportunity to, to vote on it. Now, the, the deadline for the voting is going to be Friday at midnight, this coming Friday, uh, Friday night, actually, August the 30th. And um, the winner is going to get a, an ASMG plaque uh, and sort of bragging rights. And so this is something we're going to do every season to get the fans involved. Um, we're also looking at maybe getting a write in <laughs> in future uh, contests. But it's just a way to it's a little friendly competition. And, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. So a couple more days, you get to pick out who's your favorite goal of the season. We got our own favorites, but we're not going to let that <laughs> get in there. Yeah, we have so. internal uh, arguments and uh uh, and uh, discussions on who we think is are the, the best goals. All right, so let's talk about the fall season. So when we talk about the fall season, the first thing we got to talk about is the relegation zone from the spring. So in the relegation zone, FC Atlanta and North Georgia United did fall into that relegation zone. However, with a few changes, they are going to get to survive one more season with the Premier Division. And... Yeah, you know, I was just going to say, this is something that, you know, the, the, the fans and supporters out there can understand, you know, at this level, every season, there there can be a realignment depending on what happens. And and this happened this past season, um, as you'll you'll get into. And so it's an opportunity sometimes for teams to to move up that ordinarily wouldn't be able to move up or uh, to take time off. So uh go ahead i didn't mean to interrupt you but go ahead and uh kind of get into those those details no absolutely you're right on spot on so luckily for north georgia and fc atlanta two teams decided that they do not want to participate in the fall season this year so legends fc and atlanta united academy have decided that they are going to sit out this fall season and a little bit of a update this fall season instead of 13 teams we're going to have 14 teams in the premier division so right, that so opened the, up that opened up those spots right right so that and in the upsl georgia premier 14 teams is the absolute uh, maximum you can have in, in a division any more than that and we could be looking at dividing the premier much like florida has done and texas uh, into separate premier divisions. But for right now, we have a 14-team team, uh, team division, uh, 13 games in the season. Everybody plays everybody once. And uh, just a little bit uh, of background with Atlanta United, it, I think this might happen with a lot of MLS academies. They've restructured. So the, the team that they had in U19 does not exist anymore. And so that's the reason why they're not a part of the fall season. Now, there is an opportunity that they could come back um, at some point. It depends on Atlanta United themselves and, and who they might want to uh, organize to put in the UPSL. But it, it's been a, a good ride with them. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to maybe seeing something like that happen in the future. Legends FC is a different story. Uh, they're, they're in the process of reorganization, but they will return. Um, we're not sure about their placement yet. It depends on, you know, what happens in this this fall season and also what happens with their re reorganization in the offseason for them. So that'll be something that uh, we're, we're going to have to review at the end of the season. OK, and so 
Let's start with the 14 teams for this fall season, and we're going to do this alphabetically. First team that's going to come in is Albion F SC, who was formerly Atlanta Fire. They got promoted from Division One. This will be their first season in the Premier Division. Yeah, I mean, Albion SC that is sort of a rebranding of uh, formerly Atlanta Fire South uh, United. And, uh, you know, they, they did very well in, in the uh, Division One competition, but now they've taken that step up. And, you know, Albion SC is it's a, it's a nationwide uh, type of uh, academy. Uh, so there, there are other ones around the nation, uh, the national affiliates. And and so this is just one of those ones that that's reorganizing, reorganizing as Albion. And so very well run, very organized with a lot of history. And um, it, it's hard to know because I didn't see a lot of uh, them play in Division One, but the fact that they're able to be uh, allowed promotion into the Premier tells you a lot already. And of course, the, the history that's there. So it'll be interesting to see how they adjust to the new competition coming up this fall. And then we move on to the second team, that being Atlanta City FC with Coach Joao Johanning. Be interested to see what happened. The spring season did not, like we said in the uh, last week's podcast, sp spring season did not go Coach Joao's way at all. Uh, we haven't really had a lot of conversation with him. He's been, you know, head in the trenches working hard. So he hasn't really given us an update on the roster and, and how the team is. We know that we just did the U13, 15, 17s uh, Academy uh regional cup just a couple weeks ago they were heavy in that did decent uh still a lot of work to do they got a lot of those young kids uh we'll see if Thierry Jules is back if Jimmy Noel is back Arroyo some of those guys are they back we don't know uh does he have the chance to get likes of uh Camus Jaden he was in and out with the roster the last two seasons uh, don't know what we're going to get from the Atlanta City team. Yeah, I mean, th this is just one of those ones that's almost like a soap opera, uh, Larry. Uh, Atlanta City um, always had a soft, you know, spot in my own heart for them because of the opportunity that uh, Coach Johannan gives to the youth. I mean, he, he is very youth focused when it comes to the development of talent. Um, he's a fantastic coach. But, you know, having said that, he's a one-man band and so he doesn't have the the variety of coaches needed really in my opinion to 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 get to the next level um uh in, in the premiere so I, i'm a little bit worried about you know his ability to really compete at the top level and like you say we don't know what's happening with Thierry jules with jimmy lee noel um, I know that Camus Jaden, he was uh, actually removed from the, the roster last season for disciplinary issues within the club. Nothing with the league, but something within the club, undisclosed. Um, you can only guess, but I don't know if he'll be back. And so that leaves a lot of the youth um, there, very talented youth. They played well last season, but, you know, it's it's men against boys in this case. And you know, the talent level is only getting higher uh, it, with the other teams. So, but again, you know, this is something Coach Joao knows, you know, and, and he's a smart guy. He's a, like I say, a good tactician, good coach. And so my guess is he will try to make those, those adjustments by getting in some experience and hopefully that can make the difference and, and help them to compete in this fall season. But He's going to have to make changes over what happened last season to really to, to last and not get stuck down in that quagmire of the relegation race. Yeah, when we talk about men, we talk about the next team. That is Dalton United, a team that has been at the top of the table for the last several seasons. And the team that I've said in the past when we've done these pregame or preseason uh, little looked at, I've always said until someone can beat Dalton United, they're at the top of the table for me. Coach Kiko always has a great squad up there. We'll see if some of some of the guys are getting a little bit older, and we'll see if he's got some new blood for this next season. Yeah, it's interesting. We, we just talked about Atlanta City uh, with the youth with uh, Dalton United. Um, it, it's the, uh, the the other realm, the 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 players that are getting a little bit long in the tooth, so to speak. 
but lots of experience, lots of talent there. Um, but, you know, it, it, it are they getting in the, the new fresh legs and, and fresh players that are going to be needed and growing the squad that'll be needed for this fall season? But, you know, they've always performed. They've always been competing. So Coach Kiko, like you say, seems to make the right moves. And I expect them to be challenging for the division title again. And yeah. so, uh, you know, it, it should be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, they're one of the teams that has a very, very full trophy cabinet because they've won a lot, a, a lot of trophies over the course of the last few seasons since they came from Division One. They've been doing nothing but win. And then we move on to the next team, FC Atlanta. Like we said, a team that was in the relegation zone, but they were saved for one more season. It'll be interesting to see what FC Atlanta can do. Can they make up from some of those mistakes from the spring season? Maybe get a couple more players in and see if they can make a run on the playoffs and get into one of those top eight spots. Yeah, FC Atlanta, I think uh, uh, Coach Javier Ferrer has done a, a fantastic job there, but um, they, they missed the mark a little bit last season. And like you said, they ended up in the relegation zone. And if, if not for the realignment and for teams like Atlanta United and Legends um, dropping out, they would not be back in Premier this, this season. So they've got another, they've been given another chance, a lifeline here to see what they can do to get going. But uh, coach uh, Ferrer, he's, you know, again, a good coach. Um, he's got a lot of talent to pick from, but is it going to be enough is, is the question. And so we'll have to wait and see. And we move on to another team that's been going through some wholesale changes in the spring season. And you had a chance to talk to their owner a little bit later, that being FC Birmingham. You know, they changed the coach, changed some of the squad, and kind of were sitting there in the middle, Giancarlo Bustamante there on the top of the pitch. Let's see, you had a chance to talk to Doug Walk, uh, the owner over there at FC Birmingham, just kind of get some of his ideas of what to expect. They've even, they're going to play at a different location this season. Just a lot of changes there at FC Birmingham. Yeah, I mean, uh, Coach Doug Walk, and he's uh, one of the owners there, and um, it, it's uh, it's been it's been a, a chore, I think, uh, keeping the, the team going at, at the level that they're going at. It's, it's a large club, but, uh, you know, they have a new they had Coach Goldfarb uh, for a, a few seasons there. And, and we're trying to make progress. Uh, coach Goldfarb has now gone on. He's got other coaching duties and he's close to retirement. But uh, their Division One coach uh, Gabriel Gregul came in to be. He was appointed the Premier Division um, manager, and I, I think that uh, there's been an adjustment period. You know, there, there's been some new players come in, like you say, but there's you know some of the old guard there, like uh, Bustamante and, and and a few others that are are trying to to reestablish their foundation, and it has not been easy. And so it'll, you know, again, this is one of those unknown question marks. It's a, it's a big club. It's a talented club, new coach, um, new philosophy. So it's unknown. It's unknown. How will they do? Will they gel? Will they bring in some, some, you know, new talent that'll mix with the, the old talent that's there to, to make a run for the playoffs. It, it remains to be seen, but it, it, this is probably FC Birmingham is probably one of the bigger question marks for me. Um, I can see them, you know, challenging for the playoffs, but I can also see them if things don't go well, fighting it out to stay out of the relegation zone. You know, it's just, it's, it's wide open, I think. And then a big question mark for me is going to be another team coming from division one, but a really, really interesting and exciting team. That being fountain city FC, a team that the coach was, the uh, coach of the season for the spring. They had the golden boot for the division one. So a team that's coming down from that Columbus, Georgia area and very exciting. They've ever since they've gotten into the UPSL, they've been a part really interesting. Got a really big social gathering, a lot of, a lot of attention down there in the lower West region of georgia they're always talking in the so in in our live broadcasts 
in the chat and everything. So I'm really ex just excited to see what Fountain City can bring to the Premier Division. Yeah, Fountain City, um, probably one of the most anticipated teams that I want to see personally in, in the new season coming up. Uh, I love the way Gage uh, runs that club. Uh, Gage Joyner, he's the, one of the owners there. And they run it very professionally. Um, what's particularly exciting about them that that maybe is not evident in some clubs like Legends FC and UMA, is, and they're from that same area too, they don't use a lot of college players. And so the team that did so well in Division One this last season, and again, the, the you know, realignment has allowed them to come up uh to premiere and they they are well deserving of that i think that they can make more of a uh impact than many might expect as a promoted team because you know these guys have been together for a very very long time uh you know their coach um sean duvall won coach of the season last season there uh for good reason and they just have a solid squad there. I mean, uh, I don't know if Tristan Scheidel is going to, he's the golden boot winner from division one from last season. Um, I don't know his disposition for coming into the premier division, but he would be on a stage uh, on a proper stage for him. If he is going to come back uh, for the premier division season. So, um, you know, they have some stiff opp uh, opposition, as as we well know. But you know what they'll be able to do. I think that they might be able to make more, more like I said before, make more of a splash than many might be anticipating. And moving on to a team that I feel like they didn't meet their own expectations in the spring season, and that is Georgia Athletic SC. They came in from Division One, and you had a real a, a big hype for them. Uh, Coach Michelle, you had Nazario and Bamio on the top, scoring a lot of goals down there in the Division One. He had previously came from Atlanta Rovers. They and their season was kind of hot and cold throughout the spring season, and I I think that they gonna really kind of kick themselves. They feel like they didn't meet their expectations, and I expect them here in the fall to kind of have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder that they need to prove themselves here in the premier division. Yeah. I, I think that sometimes we can be uh, fooled a little bit because of the success of some of the, uh, the teams that come out of division one and they perform at the highest level, like a Dalton United did uh, when they came out and, and they were gangbusters uh, when they came in, UMA did really well when they came in, despite um, having to, to use so many youth players um, in, in their season when they, when they came into the premier division. But uh, Georgia Athletic was the same way. I mean, they dominated in division one, had to come in and uh, perform. And they've done, you know, reasonably well. So, you know, will they use that as a springboard to go on? Um, you know, I think they have every opportunity to do so. Do so. Coach McKelly, again, uh, has the experience now of one season in the premier. He, he, he's gone through the gauntlet. He's seen what, what's up against his team. So it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, how that turns out. And another team that's kind of in the same boat is Georgia revolution. I think they also came in, they came in from division one last season. They also probably had really good expectations. Unfortunately, not a really good, a record down there at Warhawk Stadium. They were 3 0 and 3, so three wins, three losses. They didn't, they were just out of the playoffs in the spring. I think that that it was kind of, you know, they, they did have good success down in Division One back last fall. Uh, but you know, maybe maybe it was a little bit of humble pie that they had to eat that spring season. Uh, because you gotta know that this Georgia division in the premier division is one of the toughest divisions in all of UPSL. And it is decided season after season by just minuscule points, one point here, two points there. So every single loss means massive in the premier division. And I think that's something that they down there at Georgia revolution I think they're going to have to strive to do better this next season. 
Yeah, I, I think that you will see an improvement with them. Uh, they, they started out well uh, last season, but it was the weak finish that did them in. And so that that became uh, a, an issue for them uh, when it got to, to the end of the season as they, they pushed on to the playoffs or an attempt to get to the next level. But um, I think, again, just like Georgia Athletic, they've had a season of experience now after stepping up from Division One, and they have a lot of um, promise. I mean, because, again, a professionally run academy, a uh, large squad, something that they can really, um, uh, you know, rebound from from last season and and go on to the to you know higher status for the the fall season. So it'll be interesting to see if, if they can convert that. Now they they did manage to just squeak into the playoffs last season, uh, where they lost to Dalton United uh, pretty emphatically five nil. But um, you know. Again, one year of experience, bring in some fresh legs, good coaching that they have. I think you'll see them kind of competing, um, if not for the division title, at least for uh, a higher playoff spot. And a team that we expect to be battling for that title as they do season after season is Kalanji Pro Profile. Coach Bruno was able to get his guys to the playoffs in win the Georgia Conference playoffs represent Georgia in the nationals, but then fell to what was the national champions, Soda City. So Coach Bruno, he did well with bringing in some new blood with Kalen Kalanji and Daniel Tomasi, like we talked about last week. You've talked to Coach Bruno. He's talked about wanting to bring in some more youth players from his academy system to go in there with the likes of Carr, and Irving and Tachi back there in the back line with Playtez, also with Tiente and Joseph Samuel there in the midfield and needing to get some help up there from Anthony Sumo. Somebody, the one thing that I'll say is you had Kaylin Kalanji there at the top in the middle there with uh, Anthony Sumo, but with the loss of Patrick Oconquo, he didn't have that partner on the left-hand side like he had in seasons past. So we'll see if Coach Bruno can get a replacement up there on that left side to see if he can push and they can easily win the regular season like they have done in seasons past. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a team that's loaded. And uh, I, uh, they a lot of these players have been playing together since they were small children. And so, you know, it, it's it, it, every season, no matter what the circumstances are, the Kalanji Pro Profile are, are right there in the mix, um, either vying for the division title or, you know, um, winning it out in the playoffs. And so they've, they've done the the uh, championship on, on a number of different occasions. They've won the title on a number of different occasions. And, you know, they're going to be up there again. They just have that, uh, uh, that amount of, of talent everywhere. Like you, you mentioned Sumo, you mentioned Tiente. You know, uh, hopefully Playtest will be back in goal for them. You got Joseph Samuel there. I mean, it's just every spot they they're they're just loaded. And so, uh, the the big thing for them, I think we've discussed this before, is you know how many different competitions they're playing in. Their attention has been divided. Uh, you know, they played in different cups and different uh, travel to different uh, competitions around the country, but. Uh, as you said, in my conversations with, with Bruno Kalanji, they look to focus now on the UPSL competition this season. It's going to be a priority. So if that's true, I think you're looking at the favorite for the division because it, you know, they have the resources and the players to, to really compete with, if not uh, dominate in, in this division. But that's a big if, if they do that. Um, so we'll, we'll see. And, you know, once the season starts, if that attention still is focused on the UPSL or if they start to lose that focus like they have in recent seasons. And then we move on to the luckiest team in the top 14, and that's North Georgia United, a team that struggled to get points in that spring season. They say they they save themselves due to the realignment for one more season. You've had a chance to talk to the owner, Jonathan 
Torres up there. A lot of changes happened in the spring, like we talked about last week with the coaching change. You've also got a lot of player changes, especially, you know, like we talked about with them losing uh, McKeever a couple seasons back, really didn't have a good, you know, a solid striker there for them. But they also had Emmanuel Lom, who was the golden boot for the spring season. That's one thing that they can use to, to plat it, you know, to, to have a little jump off point for them here in the fall is Emmanuel Lom's success. Need to see just a little bit more fire from the North Georgia United. They need to get points and they need to get them quickly because with what happened last season, I think a lot of teams are going to kind of overlook them. They're just going to say, well, this is a win and they need to prove early in the season that they're here to play. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, probably one of the biggest disappointments from last season. You know, it, it's a team that started out weekly playing closely but losing, and they ended up in the you know the bottom spot uh, of the division. And like you say, they were saved from relegation by uh, two teams that dropped out. And so this this again, much like FC Atlanta, gives them another opportunity to uh, make a difference. Um, you know, they have the ambition, but do they have the players? Do they have the resources needed to to get to that next level? It remains to be seen. And um, unlike, uh, you know, I mentioned, you know, Fountain City, that Fountain City doesn't have a lot of college players. I was uh, just remarking about how some teams, they come in like legends who uh, have a lot of college players. UMA have a lot of college players uh, that, have to divide their attention between their college duty and playing in the UPSL for their for their club. Uh, North Georgia had that issue. They had the clean house, and now they're turning their focus away from the college players, much like Fountain City has. And so that could help them with a more consistent, um, uh, you know, results with you know the games that they play in the fall season. So, you know. It's up in the air, but um, they have a mountain to to climb to 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 make a difference in the Premier Division with the with the opposition that they're going to be up against in this fall season. And like we said, they lost a couple of their key players in the spring to Georgia FC as they moved up to Nisa, and unfortunately, due to their uh, contract restraints, they weren't allowed to play in the UPSL with being that professional contract. So it really really hampered north georgia's spring season so we'll see what they can do uh now we get to move on to the darlings of the premier division last season's regular season champions potros fc potros and and christopher uranga they did a fantastic job in the spring like we said last week we can't give them enough praise really really impressed with what they did however there's been a lot of changes over the time between what was the regular season and playoffs. And now as we get ready for the fall regular season, we've got a head coach change. Uh, uh, you also got some word about some player changes happening. Just let me know what what's going on over there at Potros. Well, I mean, I, I, they're playing the cards close to the vest uh, in, in this offseason. Uh, you, know, you mentioned that the uh, the coach who won the coach of the season last season for them, um, he's gone. And um, I don't know the circumstances of, of the coach leaving. I don't know what they've done as far as getting another head coach in. I know that they were in Latin America for a, a tour in the offseason. And, you know, does that put a certain type of strain on the club? Um, you know, I, I think sometimes clubs can bite off more than they can chew. And so when you've had success like Potros has had in in uh, in the season that they had, it was a fantastic season, a, a historic season for them. But, you know, there's, you know, losing a coach or what, you know, maybe it was mutual. I don't know if it was you know, he got a better offer or, or what this, what the details are. I'm sure that we'll, we'll find out more of that in the, in the, in the near future. But what does that mean for getting into this next season? I mean, what kind of consistency can you have? 
new coach usually means new philosophy. Does it also mean new players? And they still haven't developed an academy um, or a, a second team to to help with um, feeding that that first team. So, boy, you know, it's it, we saw Atlanta City who won the, the uh, playoffs last season, and then they they fell like a stone. I don't think we'll see that with Potros, but will we see the same consistency that was a hallmark of their their campaign last season? Um, it's it's hard to see that. Okay, so now my team of surprise and not in a good way that didn't meet expectations in the spring and that Soccer Save Live SSL FC, they did not perform at their best in the spring season. They've been at the higher part of the table since they've been in the Premier Division, a team that is kind of an offshoot of Kalanji Pro Profile. They were basically their U23s and then became their own entity. And last season, they had some roster changes. They also had, I almost kind of feel like they had some issues with the coaching staff and administration in SSL. It just didn't seem like the team was was cohesive and was was working as the machine as we expected from the likes of Kalanji and SSL. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with SSL here in the fall. Yeah, I mean, you said a mouthful there, uh, Larry. I mean, SSL, um, as you said, uh, you know, part of the Kalanji Soccer Academy. Um, this is the, this is a team born out of the same club as uh, Pro Profile. You know, so they share a lot of heritage together. Um, but it is interesting that they are run very different. And last season, there were a lot of admin issues, a lot of standards not met. Um, it's well known um, some of the problems that they, that they did have in, in trying to stay up to uh, the same level as everyone else. And again, it's a similar problem that they had uh, with uh, Kalanji Pro Profile. They have players that play on multiple teams. They have, they're playing in, in multiple competitions. Uh, we've seen them at games where they had mismatched uniforms. And so uh, this was a, a, a subject of much contention in the offseason to the point where if, if anybody had read the article uh, at uh, upsl-georgia.com about the new season, Soccer Saves Lives was not a part of the conversation for Premier for this fall. But there was uh, a reevaluation. There was a meeting with them and the league and uh, there was also a, a complete separation. So Soccer Saves Lives now is not affiliated with KSA, with Kalanji Pro Profile at, at all. It is run as a separate entity. Now, having said that, they still come from the same place. <laughs> and so um, they have been given a lifeline uh, to uh, play again in the Premier Division. They are returning. They weren't in the relegation spaces or anything else. Their their problem would have been administration. And so uh, through a lot of negotiation and promises made, <laughs> um, they are going to compete again in the premier division. Now, what does that mean for the competition? I don't know. Um, they were a disappointment last season. But again, much like the pro profile situation, they were also distracted with other things. And any discussion with uh, the coaching staff and also Bruno, who still is connected in um, an, an association with the coaches and uh, of Soccer Saves Lives, they are going to pretty much look at focusing on the UPSL, much like Pro Profile is going to do. Uh, so now, if they do that, then I think you have a contender for the playoffs. But if they do the same thing last as they did last season and don't focus I think they'll be flirting with uh, relegation. That's just the ins and out of it, in my opinion. Yeah, we're going to have to see some change, and we're going to need to see it fast, and we'll get to see it fast. Uh, moving on to a team that I'm disappointed that I didn't get to see them enough in the spring, and that's UMAFC, because I love what Coach Andrew Joe does down there in LaGrange, Opelika. That club, I love those players. Tony Kim, one of the just – Premier, he is going to be a pro player 
sooner or later. The the kid is amazing. I love some of the other guys down there. I love DJ Shin, Defender, uh, Ethan, the goalkeeper. I just a couple days ago, you saw here on the ASMG TV that I had the interview with Kevin Quintana, their goalkeeping coach, a guy that I know for a very long time. As I said in in there, you know, he was the coach of of my son, uh, who was a goalkeeper. Yeah. So uh, I've spent a lot of time with him, and like he said in that interview, he was taken to how professional not only that club, the 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 administration and the coaching is, but the players, how the players want to be there for coach Joe and the rest of his squad. So, and that's a team, they made it to the playoffs in the spring, lost to Atlanta United Academy. I think it'll be interesting to see what happens this fall, because like you were saying just a few seconds ago, uh, as you were talking about Fountain City a little bit ago, it was UM, UMA last fall. They were afraid because they had relied on a lot of of college players and they had to start last fall with a lot of academy players for the first few weeks and suffered defeats to Dalton United and Atlanta United Academy and Kalanchi Pro Profile. So they... I'm interested to see what ha- what kind of squad are we going to see in the first half of the fall season compared to the second half. I haven't had a chance to talk to Coach Joe and ask w- what the mentality is for UMA. Yeah, I mean, that, that's uh, I, I'm very well impressed with Coach Joe and what he's done with UMA. Um, and, and, and again, they, they are many times up against the wall because of the type of personnel they, they use. And, and you mentioned that college players. Um, it, it, it's a gamble. It's, it's a gamble working with college players because their their availability is sketchy, um, depending on what's going on with uh, the rules of playing for a college as opposed to a pro development squad. And so you have a lot of players that miss large swaths of the uh, season, especially in the fall season when the, when the college seasons are going on. And so, but I, I tell you what, they been able to work around a lot of that with their their academy and this where you know squad size and squad strength comes in into play and also coaching staff and like you mentioned last season you know they started with basically an academy team you know basically a u19 u18 type of team and they started off with probably three of the biggest juggernauts in the premier division and they held their own with that an academy squad and so that tells you the backbone at uma is is fantastic you know but much like i've said with you know some of the other teams like soccer saves lives and kalanji pro profile what would they be like if they could focus 100 percent of their resources and player strength in the premier division if they could do that i think you you're looking at a real contender but as it is I think they're going to be mid-table, not because of coaching or anything of that nature, but because of, you know, the player turnaround, the turnover rather, uh, that they have. And so, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I just think that it's going to be a challenge for them um, to, to, to make magic happen and uh, watch I'll be wrong and <laughs> don't win the division. But uh yeah, so that that those are my thoughts uh, with UMA. But I do like what uh, Coach Joe is doing down there um, in Lagrange, and um, you know th- they're sticking it out. Um, you know they 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 like you said they gave some thoughts of maybe maybe we should skip a season, you know reorganize. But you know Coach Joe very competitive. He wants to you know uh, compete and, and and put what he can out there to uh, get to that next level. So we'll see we'll see what happens. And then we finally end with Veno Tinto Atlanta, a team that got relegated last fall, was down in Division One, are instantly back in the Premier Division. Another team that's like Kalanji Pro Profile because they are loosely affiliated with FC Atlanta, uh, a team that is going to be an interesting one to watch over the course of the season because in past seasons in the Premier Division, they suffered a little bit of 
uh, disciplinary issues when it came to just getting into altercations with some other squads, a little, a little too aggressive in certain areas. They've worked that out. They've gotten, you know, we, we saw a lot more of a professional team through that fall season or through the spring season when they were down in division one, we'll see what we get as a product here in the fall season. And it's a team that we've seen, blow teams away and then we've seen them lose significantly so the kind of a Jekyll and Hyde at times that we've seen them over the course of the last few seasons in the premier division I'm going to be interested to see what they bring here this fall yeah Van Tinto, one of the promoted teams uh, formerly in the premier division was relegated one season um, and as you said they had a real problem with disciplinary uh, issues uh, to the point where even before, as we found out, they were removed from other leagues uh, because of this problem that they had. And they had that problem when they came to the premier uh, division initially in um, in the UPSL Georgia. And so, but to their credit, you know, Orlando Lopez has put together um, a really solid squad. They've solved, in my opinion, all the disciplinary issues that they've had. They've matured. And, you know, won the playoff, the Division One playoff that earned them the right to come back to the Premier Division for the season. So they have a clean slate, slate right now. And, you know, the fact that you can win a Division One playoff and get to the Premier Division tells you you have a talent pool to pull from and challenge. And so uh, a lot of progress made, you know, with them, a lot of uh, progress that I didn't think was possible, quite frankly. And so uh, I think they they can be very proud of themselves of, of how they snap back and come back against adversity and competed at the highest level and climb back into the premier division. Now, what will they do with that? Uh, are they going to be a yo-yo team? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see if their talent and, and their resources can match up against some of the juggernauts that we see in the Georgia premier division. Yeah. So that wraps up 14 teams. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Today's podcast is sponsored by Images Frozen in Time. It's simple. Images last for a lifetime. And whether you're wanting to capture that perfect shot of your wedding or of your beautiful family, maybe you need that big meeting or that conference captured for marketing material. Maybe you're an athlete that wants those memories of that game-winning goal that won the title. That's where Images Frozen in Time comes to in to help you guarantee that that memory is preserved for a lifetime. Images Frozen in Time is a proud partner of the UPSL Georgia. They capture all the matches that we are at at ASMG. They cannot say enough about Images Frozen in Time. So what are you waiting for? Contact Images Frozen in Time today at memories at images-fit.com. That's memories at images-fit.com. Thank you to another sponsor of the Center Circle Podcast. That is the Pitch Pod. The Pitch Pod is ran by Joe Janner. He is the UPSL Academy Manager for the UPSL. Great guy. Has his own podcast. Really good information to get over there. So if you want to check out more information on the UPSL and what's going around in the world of U.S. soccer, check out the Pitch Pod over on YouTube. Just look up Pitch Pod 365 on YouTube. That's the Pitch Pod 365 on YouTube. All right, so 14 teams playing 13 matches this fall season for the next 14 weeks. Then the playoffs will start the first week of December. We're going to have eight teams in the playoffs. The first uh, first seed is not going to get a bye this time like they've had in previous seasons. So that will be fun to watch. So the big change for the fall season is non-pro soccer. Now that they're defunct, we needed to bring back to life UPSL-Georgia.com. It's the fan unofficial site for UPSL Georgia. It's going to be ran partially by ASMG, partially by the teams themselves. You know, the official site is still going to be uh, premier.upsl.com, but you can talk more about what will be upsl-georgia.com. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I miss non-pro soccer. I mean, the, the guys over there did a fantastic job for us for a few seasons. Unfortunately, they were not able to continue uh, with the model that they had. And so um, they stopped rather abruptly, uh, kind of unexpected for us. So we, we already had UPSL-Georgia.com, but we weren't maintaining it. But now we're going to have to maintain it. Um, and and it's, it's a parallel site to UPSL. It's not the official site. I, I must stress that. Uh, but it's sort of a, a, a site, an informal site for the fans. And so we will have match reports there. Uh, images frozen in times will, you know, they do our uh, match photography for ASMG. And, and of course, they'll be involved with uh, uh, player, uh, excuse me, match galleries uh, there uh, at each week. And so it, it's, a, it's a place where you can go to get uh, it's sort of a one-stop shop place for anybody that wants to go and follow maybe one of the teams and and see uh, some of the uh, behind the scenes content that we do, some of the podcast information and and, and live stream links. It's all going to be there uh, at upslgeorgia.com. And so, um, it, you know, the schedule's going up now. And, and so it, it's a good fun place where people can uh, interact there. Uh, a little bit more informal than the UPSL website, where it's it's more information given, but here it's more interactive. So uh, I, hopefully it'll be a fun site, not only for the fans, but also for the teams that that have some control over their own pages there. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, that website develop and replace what non-pro was doing for us. Yeah, so you're going to find news, you're going to find tables and and standings and uh, follow the Golden Boot Race. Uh, we'll have match reports from the matches that are done throughout the league, not just matches that are happening uh, on ASMG TV, but you know we'll have match articles for matches that are ran by Potros FC or by Georgia Revolution clubs that have their own broadcasting system. Uh, you'll also be able to look at, like you said, photo galleries, live stream links, uh, and so much more. There's more coming that we don't even have designed yet. So expect a lot coming from that over the course of throughout the season. So upsl-georgia.com is going to be a fun little place to keep up on everything that's happening in the UPSL Georgia conference. One of the things that you'll also find on the upsl-georgia is going to be the predictions from the ASMG staff Minus Andre, because of course he is the conference manager. Don't want to, you know, separate church and church from state. You know, don't want to be biased as a conference manager. Conflict of interest. <laughs> so from the from our staff, myself and 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 people like John Reno and Jason Longshore, and Danny Catula, uh, some of the other uh, camera operators and photographers, and you'll get their uh, idea of who they think is going to win the division this year so like you said there's going to be a lot of a lot of information on that upsl-georgia.com and that hey, and I, I, i'd like to i'd like to hear from the fans too i want to see if the fans can comment on who they think is going to win in the division and and how they will place in in the premier division definitely so we're going to try to get more and more fans and hopefully we can talk this fall season again to our greatest fan andrea from over in Italy. Hope that we hear from you in the chat as well in our matches here this fall. So that's going to do it for this episode of Center Circle Podcast. Next week, we'll talk about what happened in week one. Uh, keep an eye on our social media so you can see what matches we're going to present here in week one. And then we we'll, might have an opportunity to start talking about Division One as their season is going to kick off here in about two weeks. And that is another major change, not just the premier division changing, but also division one, 12 teams coming in division one. And a lot yeah, of and uh, we hope to uh, get Patrick Roach uh, uh, on one of the episodes. He's the division one manager, a colleague that works with uh, me in the Georgia conference and uh, be good to get his insight on division one and what's going on there. All right, that'll do it. So for Andre, and for myself, Larry, thank you for watching Center Circle Podcast. We'll see you next week.